Here's 100 Rust tips and tricks that you need to know. If you're ever living in a shack and you want to hide your loot, one thing you can do is place stashes down and hide your loot in them, and then place a large box over them. And just like that, your loot's completely hidden. You can also do this even if you live in a normal base. All you have to do is fill a backpack up with all your main loot, and then drop it on the floor and place a large box over it. You can quickly break a car just by placing down some bar doors. Then all you have to do is push the car into the open door and shut it. After a while, this will break the car completely, and you'll be able to get any of the loot inside. You can completely negate fall damage with fire. All you have to do is throw a molotov, and then ride the flames down. You'll still take a bit of damage from the fire, but you won't take any fall damage. When you throw an airdrop in rust, it releases a bunch of pink smoke. To stop this, all you have to do is right-click throw the supply signal onto a garage door, and then when you open and close it, there won't be any smoke. If you're ever getting door camped, one thing you can do is stick a grenade to your door and open it. The grenade will go through the wall, blowing up whoever would door camp in you. Did you know if you put a cassette recorder on a workbench, you can no longer pick up the workbench with a hammer? At least until you remove the cassette recorder. With this in mind, if you hide the cassette recorder with a small box, chances are no one's gonna know how to pick it up if you get raided. If you ever need to hide a bunch of loot really quickly, one thing you can do is place a small box inside of a node, and then you can hide your loot in it. As long as no one breaks this node, your loot should be pretty safe. Did you know using water guns you can extinguish fires, such as molotovs if you're getting raided? Another thing you can do is defuse sand. Satchels. This can be useful if you're getting raided, or if you're raiding and you throw a satchel wrong, you can defuse it and pick it back up. Using the water guns, you can also turn off large furnaces. If there's a bush outside your door and you don't want anyone camping in it, one thing you can do is place a foundation over it, and the bush will disappear. But one thing to know is if you break the foundation, the bush will come back. This is the Fogger 3000, you can put it outside your base and turn on motion detection, so if anyone comes to door camp you, it'll turn on and make a loud noise. If you hold your middle mouse button down and drag a stack of items, it'll actually half the stack. If you press shift and middle mouse button and drag a stack of items, you'll split the stack of items into thirds. If you want to quickly equip someone's armor, just press alt and hover loot, and as you can see, you'll instantly put on their armor. If you press middle mouse button on an item in the quick craft menu, you'll actually craft five of them. If you ever need to reskin loads of items, instead of doing it one by one, one thing you can do is press shift and hover loot. This will reskin your items to the last skin you used. As I'm sure you know, jumping on land makes a lot of noise, but jumping on the beach is completely silent. If you want to hide your wires, one thing you can do is hold down shift and scroll down. This will put the wire inside the foundation and looks a lot better. You can hear jumping from further away than you can hear running. As you can see, you can't hear me running, but when I jump, you can hear me. A quick way to upgrade everything in your base is to select the material and hold down left click, and then just right click on everything you want to upgrade. If you're upgrading your base and you can't quite reach a part of it, try up in your look radius, and you should be able to reach it now. If you ever need a blue card, one quick way you can get one is by gutting fish. As you can see, you can actually get a blue card from this. As I'm sure you know, whenever you use a boat in Rust, it makes a lot of noise. But you can actually make the boat silent. Instead of holding down W, try tapping it over and over again. You won't go as fast, but it's much quieter. Did you know you can actually turn off the rain sounds in Rust? All you have to do is go to your audio settings and change the speaker mode to mono, and then change it back to stereo. After you've done this, there won't be any more rain sounds, but you can still hear everything else. You should start using more than one building plan, as when you only have one, you have to right click and select a new building tile, which can waste a bit of time. Instead, if you use multiple building plans, you only have to press a button to swap between building tiles, which is a lot faster. Did you know you can place oil refineries inside the legacy shacks and still get in and out easily? Whenever you use night vision goggles, there's always this annoying sound. To get rid of it, all you have to do is use an emote, and just like that, the sound's gone. If you're ever low on HP, you can drink water to heal up to 40 HP. You can also drink water to get rid of radiation poisoning. Usually, when you use a torch in water, it instantly goes out. But if you constantly swing the torch, it'll never go out, even at the bottom of the ocean. As I'm sure you know, 556 ammo is a tier 2 blueprint, but did you know you can craft it with only a tier 1 workbench? You can do this by crafting a mixing table. Then as long as you already have 556 five, ammo learn, you'll be able to craft it inside a mixing table. And just like that, you've crafted some 556 five, without a tier 2. You can also do this in the new cooking workbench. By default in Rust, you'll hold your weapon in your right hand, but if you want to change this, all you have to do is type this command in. Now keep in mind that this change is only visual, it doesn't affect gameplay at all. 
If you ever use flame arrows in a bow and swap hands, the flame effect disappears. The next tip is to start setting up your tugboats properly. One thing you should do is put your workbenches next to the door just like this, so when you open the door, the workbenches act as an airlock. Another thing you can do is put rugs on the windows, so if anyone tries to look into your tugboat, they can't see anything. Another thing you can do is place two bear rugs just like this, and you'll actually be able to push the tugboat. Now it's not the best, but it's better than nothing. If you blow up a door, you won't be able to replace it straight away, but if you blow up a window, you can instantly replace it. For some reason, guns that shoot pistol bullets can't shoot through rugs, but guns that shoot 5.5 five can. If you ever want to be less exposed in your shooting floor, one thing you can do is put signs on the window bars, and as you can see, you're way less exposed. If you ever want to give your base a quick bunker, one thing you can do is put some stairs in front of a single door. When it's stone, you can get in and out of it very easily, but if you upgrade it to adobe, you can no longer fit through. If you've ever got a full inventory and you want to eat some mushrooms, you don't actually have to pick them up anymore, just hold E on them and you can eat them straight off the floor. Did you know you can actually reload weapons by putting them inside turrets? If you ever need to demolish a wall that you know someone else is on the other side of, usually you'll have to pull your gun out after demolishing it. But while demolishing it, if you press your middle mouse button and swap the hammer and your gun, you can hold your gun out while demolishing. Did you know you can survive a fall in rust from any height? All you have to do is make sure that you land on spikes, such as the top of wooden walls. You'll still take a bit of damage from the spikes, but doing this makes any fall in rust survivable. As I'm sure you know, you can place ladders to get over large walls. But if you put a large sign on your wall, you can no longer put ladders on them. Speaking of large walls, you can actually put furnaces, campfires, boxes, and shotgun traps on top of them. You can ride a bike to completely negate all fall damage. If you're ever flying a minicopter and you need to land quickly, one thing you can do is crash into chain link fences around the map. As for some reason, crashing into these won't damage the mini. If you're ever eco raiding with spears, it's actually quicker to swap between spears while you're hitting the wall. Horses recently got updated, so now you can put them on tug boats. Now the arctic suit lets you give any normal hazmat 33% cold resistance, making this skin essential if you're living in the snow. Did you know you can actually see through double doors in rust? As you can see here, you can see some boxes as well as the TC, and when I open the door, it's all here. Did you know if you place the garage door on the inside, you can actually see through the bottom of it. You can also shoot through the bottom of it, but be careful because this works both ways. These next tips are all about the monuments in Rust. As I'm sure you know, you can't use ladders in monuments. But there is one exception, being cargo. One thing you can do with ladders is block off the entrances to the lower levels, making cargo easier to hold. On small oil rig, you can find walls just like this one. But if you turn your object quality down to zero, you can see and shoot right through them. At small oil rig, did you know you can get on top of these tankers? All you have to do is jump between these pipes, and you'll eventually get up on top. This is a pretty good spot to hide. Did you know at train yard, there's actually a hidden room? To get in here, just come to the top of train yard, drop down here, and then drop down here. And as you can see, you're in quite a hidden room. This can be quite a good spot to camp, as you are pretty hard to see up here. At Arctic Research Base, the snowmobile that you get here is actually just as fast on sand as it is on snow. At launch site, if you're ever at the top and you want to get down really quickly, all you have to do is jump into one of these four buildings, and as you can see, you won't take any fall damage. If you're ever at the top of dome and you want to get down quickly, all you have to do is find this pipe and slide down in between it, and as you can see, you won't take any damage. At abandoned cabins, there's a bunch of these small sulfur nodes that you can pick up, making it quite a good place to get a bit of sulfur. Now at bandit camp, did you know that you can actually fish in the water here? This can be a pretty good way to farm up some scrap. Now we're underwater labs. Did you know you can actually fish in the moon pools while you're waiting for the crates to respawn? At fishing village, you can actually do a mission that will give you a pump shotgun as the reward. All you have to do is untie 10 underwater crates. There's another mission at ranch which is worth doing. It costs 25 scrap to do, and it'll spawn a toolbox in with loads of loot. This is what the roof looks like at supermarket, but if you turn your object quality down to zero, you can actually see straight onto the roof. At mining outpost, you can actually loot the recycler from this window. At bandit camp, you can actually sell anti-rad pills for up to 20 scrap each. These next tips are all about the settings in Rust. The first setting you're going to want to change is grass displacement, as when it's turned on it's way easier to see dropped weapons on the floor. And the next setting you're going to want to change is Max Gibbs. The higher this setting is, the more debris you'll see when you break things. Having loads of debris on your screen mid-raid can be pretty distracting, so I have it on zero. If you're ever farming trees at night, it can be quite hard to see the red X. One thing you can do is change the tree marker colour from red to orange. And as you can see, the X is way easier to see. 
By default, this is how weapons will look in your hand. But if you type this command in, they now look like this, which in my opinion looks a lot better. If you type this command in, you'll be able to zoom in. This can be useful for seeing things in the distance. If you type this command in, you'll be able to craft bandages just by pressing one button. And if you type this command in, you'll be able to run just by pressing one button. The next setting you're going to want to change is max shadow lights. You're going to want to set this to zero, as having it set to zero can help you see things in the dark. Next, make sure that optimized loading is set to partial. This will let you load into servers much quicker. Next, I'd recommend setting some launch options for Rust. What you want to do is go to Rust in your Steam library, click on properties, and this is where you can set some launch options. I'll have my launch options in the description below. The next tip is to subscribe to the channel. This will make sure that you never miss another video just like this one. And the final tip is to watch this Rust video. 